So, you stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning to see if they were going to drop some Pokemon Legends ZA information after, after the Pokemon World Championships. What did we learn? What's up, YouTube? My name is Mario, aka the Loot Box Hero. Check out the second channel because the second channel is popping. I'm about to drop a big old Black Myth Wukong video over there on the second channel uh, in a couple of days. You know, so look out, look, check out that space. Um, aka the real Super Mario here, bringing you another video. Okay, so we have a lot. Uh, we have a couple things to talk about today. So we'll go over the uh, not Legend ZA news that we got from Worlds. Uh, we got some updates on put on uh, Zelda uh, Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, we've got uh, some updates on uh, well, we have a a four chan text dump, you know, on uh, Legend ZA that has a whole lot of potential mega evolutions in it, as well as a buttload of people just got banned from Overwatch 2 for cheating and zimming. So we're gonna talk about all that today. Of course, you want to continue getting videos like this from me, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires you to do. You continue getting videos from me. Follow me at twitter.com slash rsmario128. Like my video, tweet, share my video, tweet, and I will shout you out at this portion of the video. Unless I forget to do it. <laughs> all right. So, you know, I said, first up, we have uh, the uh, information from Worlds. So, I know uh, a lot of people were pretty disappointed that uh, we didn't get anything at the end of Worlds after Ishihara announced that we were going to be getting information. Uh, but we got no ZA information. So they gave us information on Pokemon Trading Card Game, basically announcing that uh, Pokemon Trainer slash Owner cards were coming back, which honestly I think is a pretty good thing. You know, I don't think I would really, uh, you know, get back into buying TGC again, mainly because, I mean, I don't really play TGC. Like... Back in the heyday when I was buying TGC, I was collecting, but I was also playing TGC. So then, of course, they updated us on TGC Pocket. They gave us an official release date, so it's going to come out on October 31st. The day before Halloween, which is pretty interesting, uh, we got Pokemon Go update. So they announced Darkrai, um, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, Darkrai, Psyduck, and... Um, Armor Roge, so all those are coming. Even though we already kind of knew that because they were data mined like a month ago, so it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and then Pokemon Unite uh, was getting no, 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 I'm wrong. Unite got those Pokemon. Pokemon Go uh, was getting uh, Dynamax, so you know, all that got announced. Uh, we got nothing from ZA, so it is what it is. All right, so Riddler Q chimes in, <laughs> and he's basically like, I told you. Uh, so then people, uh, somebody asked him, uh, definitely no, says, seriously, why did they even announce the game in, in February if they were going to ignore its existence until probably next February? And so then he says, ZA will begin its promotion within this year. Stay calm. So basically we're going to get something on ZA before the end of the year, which I mean is, is good, but <laughs> When is that gonna be though? I mean the only other time I can really think a Nintendo will do something is either in well somewhere between September and November All right, because you know, that's usually around the time when they do another Nintendo Direct uh, Which is like the end of the year direct and they kind of hype up the stuff for next year um, so that's a possibility, you know, what I'm saying but we don't even know. Everything is so up in the air with Nintendo nowadays. You know, we didn't get no presents. Like, they didn't really do much for the summer. You know, we... So, we have Pori. So, Pori, uh, he does uh, leaks and, and stuff about Pokemon as well. He says, it honestly makes sense 
to show nothing about Pokemon Legends ZA until the reveal or showcase for Switch 2. Having a monster of a game like that headlining your release window is a smart choice. And to be honest, he's not wrong. I actually think this is a brilliant idea. Um, this is actually something that they've done before. If you remember back when the 3DS launched, it launched around the same time as Pokemon Black and White 2. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was playing BW2 on my 3DS. That's what I was playing it on. And so I can see them doing something like that, launching like a big Switch title like that and in the launch window of Switch 2. So that way they could be like, hey, if you don't got any Switch 2 games, you can always play Legends Arceus, I mean Legends ZA on your Switch 2, you know? Or that can accompany your Switch lineup. Even though, I mean, all the games that Nintendo has been sitting on, like the new Fire Emblem and, you know, all this other kind of stuff they've been sitting on for, for like a year and some change, I wouldn't be surprised if the Switch 2 lineup ain't lit anyway. So, so uh, updates on, on, on uh, a game that is coming out this year, and that is Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. So, Stealth says uh, The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom supports zelda um, series amiibo in addition to items that will be useful for your adventure you may also be able to get different colors of clothing that can be obtained in game i bet zelda will get the green tunic and uh clothing set which i think would be pretty cool i think that would be pretty cool i think they should do that for um she should get the green tunic set um if you use the um wind waker uh, Link Amiibo, you should be able to get like uh, uh, the Zelda from Wind Waker. You should be able to get that one. I think they should they should have it so you can get the Zelda from the different Zelda games. Like if you use the Twilight Princess Link, then you could get Twilight Princess Zelda. You know what I'm saying? Like that would be pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest. Like just different skins. I mean, just to make the the game you know seem that much cooler. All right, so stepping away from Nintendo, we have Black Myth Wukong. Uh, one of the biggest releases of the year, and I do have quite a few things to talk about it. There's been a lot of weird propaganda around this game. A lot of culture warriors doing a lot of weird stuff. Um, so we have Pirate Nation. Uh, he said, these are the requirements and censorship that Black Myth Wukong developers as content creators when they give you a key. And it says, Black Myth Wukong, notice uh, by using the game key and creating uh, content, you acknowledge that you have been informed of the following content and your statements are not related to the marketing team. Uh, do's uh, enjoy the game. Don't, don't insult other creators, influencers, or players. Uh, don't use any offensive language or humor. Do not include... Politics, violence, nudity, feminist propaganda, and other content that instigates negative discourse. We're going to come back to that one. Uh, do not use trigger words such as quarantine or isolation or COVID-19. Okay, that one was from the CCP. Uh, and don't discuss content related to China's game industry policies, opinions, news, etc. Also for the CCP. So... Um, that, that last bit right there, that, you know, uh, other, you know, do not include other content that instigates negative discourse. That is super vague. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of times when, when you, when you get like game keys from game companies to do previews or reviews or whatever, they do kind of have some guidelines as to like, you know, what, what they want you to do, you know. Maybe there's a part of the game that hasn't been patched because there's no day one patch or whatever. So, so they'll tell you about that. Like, don't talk about that or don't talk about story stuff or, you know, don't stream this part of the game because it's spoilery or whatever. Uh, I've never seen them say something like this. This seems a bit egregious. I mean, because other content that instigates negative discourse, that could be anything. That could be a bug in the game. Okay, because remember how, how how much negative discourse was going on about Cyberpunk when, like, the people who got the really, really early copies was seeing all the bugs, and then people were like, oh, you're just lying. You're just, you're just hating on the game. You're just hating on CD Projekt Red. And, but turns out they were right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, bugs could cause negative discourse. 
story stuff can cause negative discord there's a ton of things that can cause negative discourse so i mean what does that even mean they just this is very open-ended like who determines what is negative discourse and what isn't you know is it determined by game science because they can say anything's negative discourse and just say oh you broke the rules we're not gonna work with you anymore they can blacklist you or whatever like I just feel like that's very open-ended, but of course all the culture warriors are celebrating This is a, a massive W for the company. Oh, yeah, no feminist propaganda in these games, which I mean What kind of feminist propaganda are you gonna put in a preview for the monkey game like? You know, I mean, I mean there has been rumors that game science uh, has, has said some like sexist things or whatever that i go over in the video that i'm going to post in a couple of days but i just feel like this is weird like it, it, when marvel when marvel rivals did this right and they basically said that you couldn't say anything negative about the game if you did a preview people got mad like people was big baby rage mad but when game science does this with this very pro culture warrior game all of a sudden, oh, it's a big, massive W. I just, I just found that to be weird. So we move on to Overwatch 2. So of course, Overwatch Cavalry got us covered. Uh, and it says, huge scoreboard improvements coming to Overwatch 2. You will be able to report, mute, adjust the volume of each player in the match using the scoreboard. These changes are intended for future for a future season. So whenever they say that, that means it's probably a ways off. This is something that they probably just got approved and it's gonna take them a couple of seasons before they before they get it. You know, it's a couple of seasons before they get it implemented. So by the time we get that venture skin, <laughs> we might be getting these scoreboard adjustments too. <laughs> you know, I'll say see you in season 15. Happy 2025, you know, um, so the next one is thousands of Zimmers have been banned from Overwatch 2. Uh, players who attempt to use unapproved peripheral on console will now lose access to competitive play and will be regulated to PC input pool for all unranked game modes. So uh, if you don't know what a Zimmer is, a Zimmer is a device that allows you to use keyboard and mouse on console but it fools the console into thinking it's a controller so that you still get aim assist so you get the accuracy of using keyboard and mouse like pc players do but you get the aim assist that console players get with controller so technically this is console cheating all right this is cheating on consoles you know and speaking of cheaters uh, it says Blizzard has banned over 500,000 cheaters. Uh, Blizzard has also banned and suspended over 40,000 accounts that intentionally group up with cheaters. Uh, the team are also developing a new anti-cheat technology. So basically, they finally got around to dealing with the cheater problem in Overwatch 2. So I don't play a whole lot of PC because... I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little garbage on PC. <laughs> I just am. My brain, trying to wrap my brain around keyboard and mouse after playing with my fingers for for uh, 20 years is, is just it's not working. But um, there's been a massive cheater problem in Overwatch 2. Uh, you can look at, look at any of the big content creators and they have videos about people cheating or spectating people cheating. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's crazy, so. Half a million is a lot of people, all right, you know. All right, so we get down to the 4chan text dump of the video. Uh, we have, you know what I'm saying, um, this one right here. This one has basically a bunch of like megas and like regional forums and stuff. So I thought this was pretty cool, we could check it out. It's a, it's a little old, you know. These are all the guys. The red is regional, white is evolution, blue is mega. Uh, there's no other colors here, so <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that one. Uh, no type means no change. Xerneas and Yevidal forms function like Megas, but aren't. They're called Eternal Xerneas and Eternal Yevidal. So this would be kind of like the primal forms 
from like uh, Ores, if you remember Primal Kyogre and Primal um, uh, Groudon. It's kind of like that, probably. Um, so then Zygrade receives new, no new forms. Zygarde, sorry, Zygarde. People won't get mad at me in the comments. Um, receives no new forms, but the move Core Enforcer is changed to have 5 PP and activates complete form regardless of HP. Okay, uh, I think that would be kind of weird to not give him any new forms, seeing as though he is pivotal to the game. You know what I'm saying? But okay. Um, so then we have the list of, of, of megas and stuff here. So uh, we've got Onyx Frozen Blend item, uh, and it gets Chillix, which is an ice ground type, which is actually pretty cool. All right, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, an ice ground onyx, that's not bad. Like a frozen onyx, you know, it's like permafrost, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's actually kind of cool, you know. And ice ground is not a bad typing because ice rock would just made them 4x weak to a whole lot of common stuff like steel, fighting, you know, rock, stuff like that. So making him ice ground gives him a nice, nice kind of typing, you know what I'm saying? um frozen blend item what is frozen blend like I, when i hear frozen blend i think like those bags of frozen vegetables you get from walmart for like two dollars <laughs> that's what i think about you know um shuckle uh tingle slap tingle slap okay yeah this is fake this is like super duper fake bro tingle slap uh so you get untuckle is another bug rock type okay um uh wimpod at level 30 evolves into ev ev eviscipod that's a bug dark type so this junk he eviscerates people you know what i'm saying um thievil at level 40 evolves into infernal which okay a dark fire type all right that sounds kind of cool i ain't even gonna lie uh bolton bolton Evolves into Freyhound, which is an electric fairy type. Okay, so Bol Bolton is um, the electric dog that looks like Bolt. <laughs> it's, it's that Pokemon. I think he was from like, was he from Generation 7? I feel like he was from Generation 7. I feel like he's from 7. I don't think he was from 6, but I might be wrong on that. Because I know Furfru was the dog Pokemon of Generation 6. Maybe maybe he was in there too. I just wrong about it. Um, Chespin, Delphox, and Greninja, uh, Paladin, Mage, Knight. Okay, I mean, does that mean that they get forms or or no? Nah? Like, you know, uh, Diggers B is like Annihilate, so he gets a Ghost form. Ghost Digger B will be kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? Make him kind of like an Undertaker. You know what I'm saying? He, like, digs the graves of the dead Pokemon. Like, that would be kind of fire, though. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe not for the children, but, you know, for me. <laughs> uh, Pyroar is a circus performer. Um, so, like, a lion in the circus? Because, okay. Uh, so, Go-Go is, like, a wild ram. So, a lot of people have been saying that Go-Go was going to get something... Gogo was probably going to get a Mega. All right? I mean, I think that's the one of the reasons why they put him on the champion for uh, for, for Scarlet and Violet's team because he's, he's got to get a Mega. He's kind of got to at this point. Uh, so, Cloyster is a Spike Trap. Hypno is a Nightmare. Crobat is a Gargoyle, which that's kind of interesting. Uh, Slow King will be a Reverse Inverse Slowbro. So does he get fast? Like, what does that mean? Like, does he get fast and become a woman? So he's like a trans speedster? <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, so Flygon uh, reverts to Prevost. So does he not fly no more? Is that what it is? Like, that's that sounds garbage. I ain't even gonna lie. So my low tick is Nessie. So like, if you don't know what Nessie is, Nessie is the lock less monster. So, uh, like a, a ancient dinosaur that supposedly lives in this lake. Um, but that doesn't have anything to do with my low tick. They're, they're like completely different things. Like, 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it fake on this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a couple more of these, and I'm just gonna call it fake. Uh, Chimeco will be a dream catcher. Now that kind of makes sense. All right. Uh, Extra drill is a bulldozer. Siglyph is a tapestry. Maracas is a flaming cactus. So another fire grass Pokemon would not be that bad. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Haxorus is made of axes. Well, his head is already an axe. So how many more axes can you add to him without just being overkill? You know, um, Cofagurus is a pyramid. Volcanion is a steam engine. Hoopa is a Middle Eastern genie, which he kind of already is. And Xerneas is a majestic stag with a, it's monochrome blue. And uh, uh, Yevatal is an evil condor that is monochrome red. So, yeah, so far, um, they were cool in the beginning. Like, the first one, like the Ice Onyx and the, you know what I'm saying, the, the Bolt Hound. Like, they were pretty cool. And then they just kind of lost the plot afterwards. So... I'm going to call fake on this. You know, I said, tell me what you think in the comments. You know, I said, tell me what you think in the comments about this or any other stories today. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, people, keep it real. And I'm going to get ready to play that on Black Myth Wukong once it drops.